dollars. This is the $39 billion that current law, uh, as of January, required the state to spend for the next biennium, and I've come down uh, th to $35.8 billion, which is almost halfway. So again, I, I've, you know, I've been willing to compromise for weeks now, and they're unwilling to compromise, and they're using every device possible to distract Minnesotans from the consequences of their budget, the drastic consequences <clears throat> on the people of Minnesota. Uh, and, you know, they've had their five months to be uh, dragging in 18 legislators at a cost to the taxpayers of over $3,000 for uh, per diems and uh, travel expenses is, is just really not appropriate at this stage in the process. So, I mean, their, their position is I, I accede to their budget, $34 billion entirely, or there's no, no agreement. I mean, it's just not a rational or responsible position for them to take. So I either agree to these drastic cuts, 19% for the University of Minnesota, 14% for Minuscu, throwing 140,000 people off of health care, cutting special education funding. I agree to all that that's going to be so damaging to Minnesota because they won't raise taxes on the wealthiest 2% of the people of Minnesota. I mean, we've got 28 days now, and the clock is ticking, and I'm willing to do everything, anything I can think of or anyone else can think of that will be constructive to get this resolved. It's, for us, it was a way to vet the governor's budget, have more discussions about that, get some further details on his priorities, uh, and as well let the public in on you know, our budget and talk about that. So that was, you know, that's the intention of these meetings. That's going to be our intention going forward. Uh, and we would just really encourage the governor and his commissioners, uh, through his commissioners, to participate in that process. We think it's important for the legislature. We think it's important uh, for the process. And we think it's very important for the people of Minnesota. Well, I think the first thing that we have to establish is a, is a set schedule of meetings. Um, uh, and it has to be uh, often. Uh, and it has to be in depth. And you have to do it at several levels, which we've also been calling for. There has to be sort of big level meetings, and there also has to be meetings uh, at the commissioner and chair level. And so I think that we need to establish a firm schedule starting back from a date, um, whether it's June 30th, June 25th. We have to, we have to establish where um, so that we can avoid a shutdown uh, and then work back from there and schedule many and often meetings. Uh, we do have to understand the governor's priorities. We have the veto letters now, which have been helpful, uh, but they are incomplete. Uh, I think the total that we added up was about, he's objecting to about $2.5 billion of reductions that we've got. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't match with what he's saying publicly about what reductions he'll accept. And so we need to know where are the priorities. It's, 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 it's true. I mean, we just need the governor to come to the table with you know, real discussions on that. 